Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Loose Collectors The Crypt Monster Hide. And huge thank you to the legend himself, Loose Collector, for sending this out to me to review. I really do appreciate it. I've been looking forward to this figure because, as you can see, it looks absolutely insane. I'm a big fan of when... You know, people take like the old school monsters and kind of remix them a little bit and kind of add their own twist and warp it in a way. That's exactly what they did with this here. And I think it looks incredible. So I'm very excited to talk about it. But let's go ahead and get right into it, starting off with the box. As you can see, we could see the insane figure right here on the front. We get a little bit of graphics. Over here it says Loose Collector the Crypt. Down here it says the Monster Hide. And some very classic monster movie style text. I think that's awesome. Over here we get the legendary Loose Collector's logo. And then on the side of the box, we get another look at the figure look at that thing it's <laughs> absolutely ridiculous and then on the back of the box we get a look at the figure himself in a bunch of different poses and then we get some information about this version of Jekyll or Hyde whatever you want to call him and then on the side of the box here we get some more awesome looking photography of the figure and that's about it for the box it is humongous <laughs> which tells us that the figure is going to be humongous but enough about this good looking box let's go ahead and get Hyde out and take a look okay so here we have Mr. Hyde right out of the box, and my god, look at this thing. It is a beast of a figure, a straight-up monster. <laughs> look at that. Oh, jeez, this thing is insane. I love the design. It really reminds me of the way that Mr. Hyde looked in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen movie, you know? Like, it had this big, like, deformed, almost like... I don't know, like, almost like tumors kind of, like, on him, you know? Like, it looks like muscles, but it also looks like these big, freakish, kind of weird tumors. That's how it kind of looked in the movie, and that's how uh, this figure looks, too. Or at least it looks like it takes inspiration from that. Um, it's a little cleaner here on the figure, but it's still just big and ridiculous, you know? Just, like, extreme muscles with, like, veins everywhere. Just all kinds of stuff going on. And then he does have this torn shirt piece that is removable and when you take that off it, it looks even crazier look at that look at his big like upper body look at this oh man it looks crazy look like where his head's at it's in such a weird place but it just looks so cool yeah i love the design man look at that he, he definitely looks like like a tortured kind of monster you know like he's just in pain constantly or something i really like it i love the way this figure looks and uh yeah i'm very happy with the way he turned out but let's take a look at some of the amazing details and sculpting work that a uh, loose collector did on this guy because he absolutely destroyed it man it looks so good starting off at the head man they did an incredible job on this head sculpt i love the way this turned out the facial expression looks perfect. The eyes, the nose, the teeth, all of that is really well done. He's got the sideburns going. This is a great looking head sculpt. And then check out the hair. You can see that it's brown with a little bit of a black wash in there. That looks nice. Man, look at that. Straight up monster. He does come with two different head sculpts. We'll look at the other one in just a minute. But man, I love the way this turned out. I like the way the gums look. They just look so freakish, you know? <laughs> Like, his face looks human and like a monster at the same time, which definitely captures the essence of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde very well. Look at that. Man, that's so, that looks so good. And then moving on to the rest of the figure, you could see that his ripped up clothing has some really nice sculpting work, some nice texture, some nice paint. You could see that it actually looks like cloth. And it looks really good on him. I like all these, like the tattered kind of look that we have going on. Same thing on the back. It's all ripped with holes and some really great texture and sculpting work on there. And obviously this does come off. And then let's take a look at the muscles. Look at that. That looks crazy. And I like the different shades that we have in the skin tone. You know, it kind of brings out all that detail. And it like helps define the muscles a little better so you could really see all the amazing sculpting work. Damn, look at his back. Jeez. So yeah, look at that, man. The skin texture looks really good. Everything about this looks amazing, in my opinion. I love the way the veins and everything look, the muscles. Really good stuff. And then the pants do match the shirt. They're green with a bit of a black wash and stuff. 
that all looks good look at the legs big old crazy legs pinless joints at the knees that's good that's nice to see doesn't break up the look at all so that's cool but yeah man i think this figure looks amazing i love the head sculpt i love the sculpting work on the muscles the paint work on the clothing everything is just really well done and I think this is a, a fantastic looking figure. I just love the way this guy looks. And then for accessories, the Monster Hide doesn't really come with a whole lot, but he does come with some cool things, including two different sets of hands. So first off, we have a pair of fists, and then we have a set of open hands. And then lastly, we have this awesome alternate head sculpt. Check this out. This is amazing. Just like the last head sculpt, this thing is freaking incredible they they really killed it with the details on the head sculpts and honestly i really can't tell you which one i like more i think that both of them are absolutely perfect for the character just like the last head sculpt this one here has some sideburns a really nice facial expression that's very aggressive and fits the character very well look at the teeth and the eyes and the mouth all that looks really good and then this hat is removable so check this out boom and that gives them a whole nother look <laughs> man that is so so cool i love the way this looks and i like this hat quite a bit too looks really good very well sculpted matches the clothing and the pants and stuff and it fits on there securely like you don't have to worry about it falling off or anything so yeah that's such a cool looking head sculpt all right so now for some size comparisons i'm going to show hide off with as many figures as possible so let's go ahead and start it off with him alongside the marvel legends hulk and the Marvel Select Red Hulk. And as you can see, he's massive next to the Legends Hulk. And, you know, he's still pretty big against the Select version. Um, he's about the same height, but I would say as far as, like, the, the mass and the width, he's a lot bigger than a Select Hulk figure. And then next up, we have him alongside the Marvel Legends Blob and Marvel Legends Juggernaut from the 2-pack with Colossus. And as you can see, he makes both of them look tiny. And then next up, we have him alongside the Marvel Legends Strong Guy Build-A-Figure and the Marvel Select Better Ray Bill. And I think that Hyde would be a perfect base body for a custom Strong Guy figure. As you can see, the proportions are very similar. In fact, I'm sure that Strong Guy was one of the characters that Loose Collector had in mind when he was thinking about the customizing possibilities for this Hyde figure. And then here we have him alongside the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Devastator and the Marvel Select Titanium Man. And dang, I forgot how big this Titanium Man figure was. <laughs> he doesn't look that tiny next to Hyde. But on the other hand, Devastator over there looks like a little kid next to Hyde. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> dang. And then here we have him alongside the Marvel Select Juggernaut and the Marvel Select First Appearance Hulk. And both of these figures are freaking bricks. You really can't do too much with them. You can't pose them or anything like that. And that's what really makes Mr. Hyde really impressive because he's just as big as these guys, but he has way more posability. So that's pretty awesome that they were able to do that. Man, I love this Hulk figure. He stands kind of weird, but this is such a cool figure. I would love to see Marvel Select revisit this guy and add some articulation because I love this old school design that we have going on here. And then to take it down a notch, here we have him alongside the Masterverse Whiplash and the Masterverse Beastman. And then I think this is probably where Mr. Hyde is going to end up with all of my old movie monster figures. Here we have him alongside the NECA Mummy and the Jada Toys Invisible Man. And uh, Invisible Man better hide from Mr. Hyde. I think that would probably be a good idea for him. Uh, but yeah, I think he looks good next to these monsters. <laughs> Man, look how tiny Raph is. Here we have Hyde alongside the NECA Mirage Comics version of Zog and the NECA cartoon version of Raphael. And then next up, we have him alongside the Mafex Spider-Man and the Marvel Legends animated series inspired Spider-Man. And then here we have him alongside the Jada Toys Street Fighter Ryu and the Jada Toys Wolfman. And then finally, here we have him alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. And then here's a quick look at the Monster Hide alongside the Marvel Legends Hide Build-A-Figure. And you may be able to use the Loose Collector Hide for your Marvel display, although it does look pretty like stylized and different. And, uh, you know, it's kind of it's kind of crazy compared to Marvel Legends, but the greens match up pretty well. So, like, if you want to do a head swap, you can, but the heads don't really pop right on. So you'd have to secure it somehow. But I don't think that looks too bad. Yeah, so that's an option. And then something else I wanted to show before we got into the next thing here is, uh, you know, how Hyde has this removable tattered up clothing. 
The Marvel Legends Hulk figures come with something very similar. It is smaller, but I think it still works pretty well. Obviously, it doesn't have to be the right size. It's torn clothes. <laughs> so that works pretty good right there. And then you can also use the red one from the uh, Gray Hulk. If you want to just change it up a little bit, you know, it's an option. Hey, how come that one doesn't sit there as well? I don't know what's going on with this one. I feel like the white one looks really good on there. But yeah, you know, you got some options to, to change it up a little bit. So I think that's pretty cool. And as you might have assumed, Hyde doesn't have like a crazy amount of articulation. There are some good things going on here, but with the figure that has this type of body and that's this size, you really can't expect like maximum posability. I will say though, some of the joints on him get way more range than I was expecting. And as a result, this guy is a whole lot of fun to play with and you could definitely get him into crazy creeping around monster type poses so even though there's not a whole lot of points of articulation and he's big and hard to handle it's still a whole lot of fun to play with this figure and i think the articulation does the job for this type of character so i'm pretty happy with what we have going on but let's go ahead and take a look starting off at the head so the head is on a ball joint so it does spin around on that so you get that type of movement you know side to side and then it is on a hinge as well, so he could look up to about right there, which is okay. And then he could look down to right there, which is really nice. And then for the torso, we have a diaphragm cut. And this diaphragm cut is freaking awesome. Check this out. Look how much it could go to the side. Boom! Look at that. <laughs> that is awesome. Then it could go to about right there. That is crazy. And then it goes back to about right there, which is okay. But the most impressive thing about this torso is how much it's able to crunch forward. Check this out. Boom. Boom. <laughs> that is ridiculous, man. I did not think that it was going to be able to crunch forward that much. <laughs> Jeez. I freaking love that. But yeah, look at the movement on this upper torso. That is not too bad at all. And then you can spin on that as well. So yeah, really good stuff at the torso. And then he does have a waist swivel as well. And then for the arms, as you could see, his arms could go way out to the side. Look at that. That is pretty good. Boom. And then he could bring his arms down. Obviously, you got to wrestle with this dude a little bit. Boom. There we go. <laughs> he does have ball joints at the shoulders, so his arms could go all the way around. He has upper bicep swivel. And he has a single joint at the elbow, but the way they sculpted it, it's like perfectly sculpted because the bicep right here, the bicep kind of lands in this forearm area and they just left like a perfect amount of space for it to like just go together really well and, you know, gives you pretty good range. So I like that a lot. And then he does have a swivel at the wrist and then a hinge at the wrist. And then for the legs... He could kick forward to about right there, which, you know, it's pretty decent. Bring it back to about right there, which is not a whole lot. You can kick his leg out to the side a really good amount. Check this out. Boom. Mr. Hyde, master of martial arts. He could kick the invisible man right in his mouth or whoever. Boom. The invisible man. <laughs> Look at that. Probably be hard to get him to stand up though but yeah you could definitely get him to kick to the side and then he does have an upper thigh swivel as you could see the thigh swivel is right above the ripped part of the pants a lot of times we see people do the articulation on the interior of the pants so you can't see the cut but i think they did a really good job of hiding the thigh swivel within the pattern of the jeans so this works out good and it functions really well and then he has a really nice double jointed knee see if we get it to bend boom same kind of thing like at the elbow the muscles just fit together really well and give you a joint with really good range and then for the foot he does have a hinge so it could go forward to right there come up to right there he's got rocking ankles and then he's got an awesome toe hinge so yeah like i said man obviously he doesn't have like a whole bunch of articulation but what's there works really well, and you could definitely get him into some crazy 
poses. Look at that. Boom. That is awesome. I love that right there. Have him creeping around, chasing somebody. Might be hard to get him into punching poses, though. Let's see. Yeah, it'll be tough to do that. Oh, no, that, that kind of works, huh? Yeah, this is amazing. For a figure that's this big, it's like, I, I can't believe how much articulation they were able to get in there. They really took advantage of the size of the torso, you know? With all that space in there, they really made it to, to where it like, it's really free to move around. Obviously, the arms and stuff are going to be limited. There's not a whole lot of room here because all this stuff is pretty solid. It would have been nice if they tried to get a butterfly joint in there, but then maybe it would have kind of messed up the aesthetic. And maybe that would have sacrificed some of the movement in the torso, which, um, you know, I, I don't think that would have been a good plan anyways. But um, I love what they have going on with the torso. And everything else works about as, about as good as you'd want for a character at this size, you know. So, all things considered, I think they did a great job with the articulation. <laughs> There's a lot of fun to be had here and some surprises, you know. Like, this torso is freaking ridiculous. But I'm very happy with the articulation on this guy, and I'm having a lot of fun playing around with it. Alrighty, so, overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done, I freaking love, love, love this beast of a figure. Loose Collector absolutely killed it like i said at the beginning i love the idea of taking like these old movie monsters and old characters from classic literature and taking them and just making them like extreme or like warping them into like this weird kind of thing you know obviously dr jekyll and mr hyde is a classic monster but you know seeing it like this just makes it so much more badass you know loose collector did an amazing job of reimagining this and i think it came out awesome the figure it, uh, man, I love so much about what's going on here. Like I said, it looks amazing. It's super well sculpted. There's some fantastic paint work. The articulation is good too. Way better than you would expect from a big character like this. Obviously, it is somewhat limited because of the design, but you could do way more than I initially thought you'd be able to. Accessories are cool too. He does come with two different heads, which is nice. You know, it's nice to have the different options. I like that the two head sculpts are so different from each other. You've got the bald one and the one with the hair. They look they look like the same character but completely different versions of the same character so that's cool and then it's nice to get extra hands it would have been cool if they found some more stuff to throw in there but that's always the case you could always throw in more accessories to make things even better but as it is right now i'm really happy with the amount of accessories that he got especially the two heads those both came out amazing and you know for such a like unique one of a kind type of figure this guy is really versatile because you could use them in different types of situations for dr hyde you could use them in your marvel setup you could use them in your league of extraordinary gentlemen setup or you could just have a classic reimagined dr hyde i know that <laughs> kind of a uh, conflicting things there classic reimagined but you know just a good old crazy version of dr hyde and not only that there's a bunch of customizing potential with this that's one of the selling points when he was doing the kickstarter he talked about how you could use it to make like a hulk or a strong guy or any of these big huge characters and i think this is a really good base body for all those types of guys so that's really cool to see and uh yeah man i'm not changing anything on this guy though to me it's pretty much like perfect um, I love everything that we have going on here. I think that Loose Collector did an incredible job, and I'm just so happy with the way this turned out. And, yeah, I think that Loose Collector has a lot of really great stuff going on, you know? They've been doing the uh, Dynamite Comics Girls, um, you know, like Hell Witch, Lady Death, Purgatory, all those. I think they're doing some great work there, but this right here is more my cup of tea than those things. I love old classic movie monsters. I love to see them reimagined, and... I just love big freakish figures, you know, like this thing is so crazy. It's got like such a presence. It's going to look amazing on the shelf no matter where you put it. It's going to stand out, you know, people are going to see that and be like, damn, what is that? You know, <laughs> it's a monstrosity. But uh, yeah, this thing came out so good. Huge shout out to Loose Collector. Once again, thank you so much for sending this through, man. I really do appreciate it. And you know, if you're not familiar with Loose Collector, Make sure you go do some research. The man is a straight legend. By far the best customizer that there ever was when it comes to like six inch scale stuff. He was killing it back in the day. And it's so awesome to see him go from that to delivering figures like this. That's like, it's so good to see, man. I've been a fan of Loose Collector for like, 
I don't know, like 15, 20 years at this point, <laughs> or maybe not that long, but a crazy amount of time. Like before I was doing YouTube and I've been here for like eight years. So before that, I was like really into the whole custom uh, community and Loose Collector was like the man in that stuff. So it's really cool to see that he went from being a master at that stuff to becoming a master at making actual action figures that you could buy. I feel honored to have like a Loose Collector piece in my collection that 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 is of this standard, you know. This thing is just ridiculous and I'm just really happy with it. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for listening to all that. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live. Thank you very much. Peace. <laughs>